morning. How are you doing? Uh, a lovely foggy day here in Felixstowe and uh, we are continuing with the life story of today's guest, young Eric. I think we've got to episode four and we're still in Burma. Today's progress will depend upon rate of delivery and where things take us, Eric. So Eric, you were um, in Burma at the end of your, so you're coming up to Demo from the Royal Air Force. Well, no, 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 you, you've gone way ahead. Oh, right. You see, basically, um, they didn't demob. It was really a question of uh, last in, last out. And right. Because I had gone in at, um, I suppose, when, 1943, 44, something. So were you conscripted so, or were you... Oh, I was conscripted. I was called up at 18. Everybody, oh, everybody yeah. was automatically called up at 18. Right. They weren't given any choice no. or anything like that. And um, I was called up, but because of my qualifications, educational qualifications, yes. I went into the Met Office. Yes. And uh, so, of course, it was a great demand for the Met Office. I went on a Pathfinder station you yes. know, at, during the war when they were bombing Germany. Uh -huh. and, um, but then, at the, when the tail end of the war, you know, things were... In Europe. In Europe, yeah. at the tail end of it, um, I was um, shipped out to the Far East, where the war was still going on, Absolutely. of course, it was still going on with Japan. Yes. And um, as I think I explained in the last issue, we were, I was attached to the Americans, and we had these great big balloons, which we sent oh, up, yes. so the with a transmitter balloons. underneath, uh. giving all the weather up, and I suspect that it was to, to um, prepare for the atomic bomb. They were doing the research for the yes. atomic bomb, but right. we weren't told that, of no. course. No. But then the Americans pulled out of Burma, and we were left to carry on with this research work ourselves. Right. And um, so, so that was the uh, Burmese side. But I was in Burma for two and a half years, and of that, Long probably, time. probably uh, nearly two years of it was after the end of the war. Oh right. You see, so right. so this is this is where it comes in. But it was very interesting because the Japanese prisoners of war, pe people don't realise. They then sent the Japanese prisoners of war over to us to help us. Oh, but, right. But they, they were all, all seemed very well fed and very well looked after by us. A little different, I might add, oh. from the way they treated our prisoners no, of war. That, that was appalling. Because they were brought from Japan to Burma yes. and to, to recoup before they were sent back to England because their health the, was These so were the uh, Allies. The Allied uh, prisoners, prisoners, British of war, prisoners of war. Which actually was many nations, wasn't it? Yes, but I mean, the bulk of the ones who came to us were Air Force and. Um, British, obviously, yes. but uh, I remember seeing them. We had a swimming pool, and the swimming pool was closed for our personnel, and because the disease of these prisoners was so bad, sores. Went, I went up and saw them, and yeah. them, covered with sores, like like matchsticks. They were. They must have been starved oh, they were. in a dreadful condition, and um, I don't know whether somebody was explaining to me. Um, quite recently, in actual fact, that they said that the Japanese, if somebody was taken prisoners of war, they they uh, sort of thought badly of. Them. Oh, they did because, because you you had failed as a human being. Yeah, no, you should commit suicide. Absolutely, you know, yeah. like they had a term for it. I think I Harry Carey. Harry Carey. That's yeah. it. Right. So I think this might be one of the reasons why they were treated so badly because yeah. it was contrary to their. Well, it, it's the sort of. Uh, we won't go to, into the Japanese well, no, no. mindset I mean, because it's very difficult for us to understand. I know some it. Japanese who are absolutely wonderful yeah. people, so I, mean, I can't speak highly no. enough of but some of But certainly the, the Geneva Convention didn't seem to run well, it with did, regards it did, to their prisoners, prisoners of war. war. So, so we had these prisons of war coming through, right? and of course um, it was a very trying time because mm. when you saw that, and um, but life went on out there, we had our duties and what have you. But the Burmese um, at this time were, were looking to gain or have national independence, yes. uh, going by Sansung. Her father was a yes. big sort of but military see, who wanted to become independent. People get very confused. Mm. They think that we should apply our standards to a different culture. And we shouldn't. And you see, the culture no. in Burma is mm. quite different to the culture in Europe or in, in England. Right. And obviously, Burma used to be a British 
colony. Yes, indeed. Uh, part of Britain. Mm. Then the Japanese invaded, took it over, mm. and then when the British came back, there was a problem. Uh, obviously, no, mm. there was no problem. Mm. Um, all the Burmese, oh, it's lovely to have the British back. This is on the surface. Mm. I learned Burmese, and I had a lot of Burmese friends, and they talked to me, obviously, and they said we much preferred it under the Japanese. Why? They preferred it under the Japanese because there was no crime at all. You could leave all your buildings unlocked, nothing was ever stolen. Right. And with the British back, literally in the evening, you'd hear gunfire where people were holding up households, this is Burmese households, oh, right. and robbing them. If you had a jeep or something and you left it outside a shop without somebody in it, you'd come out and you'd find the four wheels gone. Sometimes so, even the engine gone. So what did the Japanese do that was so different? What the Japanese did was very clever. If they right. found anybody stealing anything, right. they cut off their heads, put them on a stake, and stuck it outside the village. Can, can, for those of, <laughs> of a uh, nervous disposition, we, you, we will take this piece. Oh, no. No, we won't. No, I, no, think that, this is, no. I think this is, but, this but you is see, going I mean, out live, yes. so we must keep it. I think it's just a question of showing the difference <laughs> oh, it is. of the different cultures. Oh, it is. So, so this mean, meant that that culture needed a very strong hand. You see, poverty, when somebody hasn't got anything at yeah, all, risk it most. doesn't matter what they do because no. they're not, they've got nothing to lose. Yeah, absolutely. And so unless there's a rigid, something rigid, yeah. and I mean, I'm not defending uh, Hadam you know who I mean. But her father, no, I'm, uh, the general. In, in Iraq, um, oh, Saddam. Saddam Hussein. Oh. But you see, he had a very strong hold and this is mm. why 300,000 people have died there, mm. because it's a different culture. They need different handling. Mm. And you see, I went back to Burma um, on our, I think it was our 50th wedding anniversary. Right. I took my wife, I wanted her yes. to see Burma, and nothing had changed. It was all exactly the same. Oh, right. Uh, the poverty uh, and the military ruled it with a rod of iron. Indeed they did. We hired a, a, mm. a, a little, um, how should I say, little coach thing to run mm. us around with a guide. I and think we did cover this. Have we covered yes, this? Yes, we did. Yes, oh well then we, we've covered we it. We have. But so if we could move on to what, when you're getting ready to depart Burma. Oh I, yes. I mean, what were your sort of final acts, final things to do? What, what, what was the biggest impression Burma made upon you? As a very impressionable, what, 21, 22 20, years? 20 year old, 21 Twi I mean, year old, yeah. I, I mean, what, what an experience yes. in life. Oh, it was, was I mean, now they're, they're not even starting to work, they might be going to uni, but in the main, they've had very few life Absolutely. experiences. They've not been bombed, yeah. pushed from pillar to post in a seminary. Uh, the Air Force then carried that on in, in, in its own inevitable way. Yeah. And then there you are in Burma at 20. Yeah. Onward. Onward. <laughs> Onward. No, but basically Burma, it impressed me because it's a very spiritual company, right. mm. country. I got to know the Buddhists, yes. the Buddhist priests. As mm. you know, they only have, I think it's two or three possessions. They can only have their uh, sandals, their yellow robes mm. and a, a begging bowl. There are only three possessions really? they're allowed to have. But I had long talks with them, mm. and of course, um, they believe that we can actually leave our bodies. Mm. And if you can clear your mind mm. completely of everything, mm. you can depart from your body. But if you try to clear your mind, you try it. It's very hard. It's very difficult. The moment you try to get your mind completely blank. I think, I think in the 60s, a lot of our young folk thought they could do that chemically. <laughs> but we won't Maybe. go there. Won't go we there. won't go there. But the whole point was they 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 thought that if you did that, yes. you were able to leave your body and go elsewhere, mm -hmm. and uh, an amazing experience. But they said it took them virtually a lifetime to learn the technique of clearing the so mind. So that's the highest level of achievement. And also, I found religion. things which I couldn't understand. Right. Say, for instance, uh, I went to I knew I had a lot of Burmese friends, right. and they had this all day long. They put um, coal and wood burning, a long area, about, I should think, oh, 30, 40 metres. Oh, right. Absolutely burning. Mm. And I went close up to it. They had a, a barrier, you know, mm. for the crowds there. And I could 
could hardly bear the heat from the barrier. This is when it had all gone down red hot. Oh, what, the walking? And, yes. and they got all these people getting themselves into this trance and mm. what have you, and then they literally walked across this red hot cold. Oh, no. And there was no trickery, there was no faking, I could feel the heat myself. Yes. There was no way it could have done. And how that took place, I just don't know. So you didn't have a go at it? <laughs> I, I just wondered. I, 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 I <laughs> thought I was going far enough getting up to the barrier so that I could uh, see it. So fire walking obviously had a big impact. Well, this is... This the, is spiritual, the, and the spiritual, spiritual beliefs of the... And their beliefs. Yeah. And you see, when you have nothing, You've got to have some spiritual beliefs. Absolutely. And um, but the different things which you don't realise. Uh, you see, these villages, everything was on stilts. Yes. And uh, the toilets, for instance, mm. they used to go up a tree. They'd find a a, a, a tree which had a, a branch yes. going down low, like right. over the swamp. Right. And they'd pick a different tree each time. And, and spread it around. And then spread it around, and yeah. they'd go up on the tree and spend spend the. So really that was street. sort of night soil distribution without mechanical ones. Absolutely. <laughs> so going on from the night soil, I didn't know why we ended up in a toilet in Burma, because <laughs> <laughs> we certainly shouldn't have done. But um, looking at... But they've got a lovely temperament. Yes, I, I, I know people. some Burmese people, yeah, and, and they are, and, and perhaps that contributes to the fact that, what, um, 60 years or more, they've had supposed self-determination and whatever and they seem to be less free now than they did when you were there but, you see, but it, that, that's that, starting to move just it's given, starting just to given move. me a, a little memory which right. i think should be remembered now by everybody right because they had a parliament the english when they came back in they reinstated the, as a parliament oh right so you had the government in effect and yes. you had the opposition right now, just to show you difference in culture yes one happy day this is while I was in Burma. Yeah. They had a parliamentary meeting, you know, what yes. have you. And a gunman with a machine gun went into the parliament right. and he shot down the whole of the government bench. You're kidding. I'm not kidding. They, they killed about 12 or 14 people, <laughs> injured, I don't know how many more. And then, of course, um, they chased him, obviously, this yeah. gun. He ran off. Yeah. And this is really interesting point. They followed him, and do you know where he went? No. He was found hiding underneath the house of the leader of the opposition. How appalling. So that shows you the type of politics of a different culture. Yeah. Because can you imagine somebody going to Westminster with a machine gun and mowing down the yeah, I can. opposition? I can. can you? I see. Well, well I, oddly, I, I couldn't. I was on duty, um, God knows, in some part of the world, and I was listening to BBC World Service when that Spanish colonel oh, yes. broke into the Spanish parliament yes. and they were fully armed and if you remember he had a machine gun and he fired it into the roof uh, so, so it can happen in Europe I, I, I realise that but, 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 but well, you know madmen yeah. everywhere yes. aren't there but, but then we but, but one uh, of the things I, I admired about the Burmese they had lovely natures yes. and very generous and very you know they shared everything and mm. really good. And, but of course the pagodas were absolutely incredible yes, I mean. and um, everybody put their, any money they had into gold. Like India? And, mm. Yes, I suppose so, but mm. the Swedagon pagoda for instance, the whole of that pagoda has got gold leaf over the whole of the site. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But then of course uh, when we were, uh, how should I say, shipped home, yes, yes. Um, we were put onto a vessel leaving from uh, Rangoon is called um, Myanmar or something like yes, that. But, right. uh, but it was Rangoon in those days. And I remember steaming out, looking across from the ship, yes. and seeing all these pagodas all over the place. Beautiful. Very, very religious. This was the thing. Yeah. So they had to have something. The, just an aside, and I don't want to distract you, but I read in one of the heavies a couple of Sundays ago that Rangoon has some of the best examples of colonial build in the world oh, and absolutely. because of the lack of development over the last 60 mm. years they are still there whereas yeah, every if you go to Singapore or wherever yeah, yeah. It, the, the whole area or you go to the Gulf now yeah. they've destroyed their yeah, architectural yeah, history yeah, sadly yeah. 
And yeah. there, there is a movement afoot trying to keep the best of those. It's yeah. a bit like the Raffles Hotel yeah. in Singapore. Yeah. Those type of iconic buildings. Yeah. But you're taking my train. Which are a bit of the history. You're taking my yes. talk, thought train away. No, you're, you're, you're away. At 87, away. I have to <laughs> go straight, unfortunately. But you're on a but boat. But I'm on a boat. You're on a boat leaving, leaving, Burma. leaving Burma. And from there, we went over to Singapore. And oh, right. we stayed perhaps, I think, three or four weeks. Really? And, but Singapore then it must have been heavily bombed. And it was mm. like a shanty town. Really, all these sort of straw, um, like straw huts yeah. and whatsits and uh, bazaars everywhere. We used to call them barasties. In and w. when when I um, uh, red light districts and the troops, which seemed to be an attraction for the troops, and this is the absurdity of it. In the red light district, there yes. used to be a troop uh, post yes. where they distributed uh, condoms well, to the troops and munitions. Which shows what a nonsense it all was, really, because right. I mean, it was a prohibited area for the troops, yes. and yet they had a thing inside catering for the troops. That sounds like a British compromise. I think it must be. You know, health betters military discipline. Absolutely. But anyway, I was there for three, three weeks or so. Right. And what was interesting, as I say, when we went round the world uh, on our 50th wedding anniversary, yes. uh, we went to Singapore, and I right. said, oh, "I'll show you all the bazaars to my wife." And of course we went, skyscrapers, huge modern buildings. And I said to them, I said, where are the bazaars? They said, well, we're just about to build one for the tourists. <laughs> so I, I thought that was really... So right. they'd lost everything they'd, really. Uh, they, they modernised the town to such an extent that they hadn't even got a bazaar left, an old-fashioned bazaar. No. And they were building one specially for the tourists. Yeah, I, I went but back to Dubai and it was the same. They, 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 they've yeah. lost an awful yes, lot. Yes. They've gained a lot, but they they've do, lost but a they lot. But they lose a lot. Yeah. But at any rate, so basically we went to Singapore, stayed there for three weeks, and then we flew from Singapore to uh, what used to be called Ceylon, which is now... Oh, yes. Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka right. where we stayed for a few days. So, uh -huh. so I had a chance to see a bit of the you world did, on the way you? back. And you're still, what, 2021? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. imagine. And then, of course, I came from uh, uh, Ceylon, flew back to England, right. where we went into a transit or a demob camp, Yes. where we were demobbed, we were given our suit. You, know, you had your suit? I had my suit. So what selection did they have? Because, I mean, you're not the tallest of people. So one would well, assume... Well, you, you just went and there's a big counter right. and virtually they looked at you and gave it. You didn't even try it on. Really? They just handed it out to you. So was it Weaver to Wee, Hepworths? Who was the, who was the tailor? I didn't know. Who, that's who, it. Knows? who knows? They just gave it. you this suit. I don't think I ever wore it. But, Did you uh, not? But there you are. That's one of the... That's See, I keep seeing photos of demob folk yes. with this ill-fitting suit and a lot of them have the old trilby hat. Now you no, say I, I did, you I never got a hat. I didn't get a hat. Didn't get a hat. Oh, no. yeah, you were short then, changed. No, 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 no. The reason for that is that in those days every man wore a hat. Yes, he did. And so if you see a man in his in his demob suit, he'd be wearing a hat just as a matter of course. To be complete. It, it was. It wasn't a question that he got that as a, as part of his demob outfit. Oh, well, then he was short changed. So, um, but at any rate, coming back to to the uh, story, I mean. You've got to think of the different values in those days. Mm. I think I was saying a few minutes ago, the average money that a um, other ranks got was 75p a week, 15 shillings a week. Really, so, right. So, you know, there was a different val sense of values. Yeah. Uh, everything costs it was so different. The average wage was three pounds a week. Yes. You could go and get fish and chips for sixpence, which is two and a half p. Today's piece. Today's yeah. money. Yeah. Um, you can get a bag of chips for a, a penny, which is yeah. how many, a fraction of a, one of our present pennies. Yes. And, you know, people don't realise the difference in values. But I think people were, perhaps, they didn't demand so much, but I think they were a lot happier in some ways. I think you're right. Because... Um, in my village, fundamentally, there wasn't a lot, but everybody sort of shared that wasn't a lot. So well, the, the envy quotient, the keeping up with the Jones, didn't really apply, well, this you is know, right. to that degree, that sort of came so in. So at any rate, I came back to England mm. and demobbed, and of course I went home to my loving parents right. and, and my lovely sister. Uh, I went to see my <laughs> lovely sister this last weekend. Oh, lovely. She, she, to celebrate her 90th birthday. Oh, glorious. And of course she'd been in the Wrens. Had she? So she came out of the Wrens, oh. and um, it was a very happy time. But of course, 
I went through a period of depression because I'd had malaria in in, mm. in Burma. Yeah. When I came back, of course, they didn't they weren't able to treat it. They no. didn't know how to treat malaria, no. and I went into hospital for I don't know how long, two or three months to right. get rid of this malaria. Yeah. And uh, so it it wasn't the happiest of time, but it was a very happy time because when I first came out, mm -hmm. I walked along uh, Balham High Road. As you do. As you do. And yes. I thought, well, I'm going to go dancing. Before, the, before uh, during the, you know... Oh, I, right, yes. I used to like dancing, mm -hmm. and I thought I'd go in and dance. And I saw this first floor dance hall uh, opposite Duquesne Court, and I thought I'd go in there. Oh, right. And, of course, I went in there, and I thought, well, dancing must have changed. Because what I hadn't realised was that it was an old-time dancing oh, was and it? not modern dancing. Oh, right. But there were two very attractive girls there uh -huh. and they sort of took pity on me and mothered me and what's it. Right. And I'm pleased to say that one of those is Snow. my present wife, has been for 64 years. Brilliant. So I must have done something. And that was then. Balham High Street, Balham High Street. Gateway to the South. Gateway to the South. You now, I don't know how to No, we're OK. Going. We're OK. We so, the time. Um, you came back, you had a period of uh, tropical illness, and there was an awful lot around, wasn't there? Well, Certainly true. the NHS had great difficulty in treating it. I, I right. know a number of folk in but my But of village. course, one of the things which they gave to all the troops coming out mm. was the, uh, the means, if they wanted to go to university or to take a study course. Oh, right. So um, I thought, well, I may as well take advantage of this. Yes. And so I went to London University, LSC, uh -huh. but unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know which, um, I was guided by my sister <laughs> who yes. suggested I took very ordinary subjects, English, French or All right. maths, which I shouldn't have done. I should have gone to yeah, law, uh, yeah. which I did later on. Uh -huh. But um, the result was I wasn't really very interested in it. Right. And I started out because I'd established, a, I think I mentioned last time, mm. uh, with this man, uh, De Maurice, yes. um, a, a business. Yes, so I said. started doing this business with Burma. Ah, and right. so I trotted round and I got the sole agencies for Tintex dyes. Oh, right. Um, which was big in those oh, days. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Sobel radios. Oh, I yes. went to all the big people. Yeah. We got the sole agency for Burma for these and we Did started really? shipping the goods out. Brilliant. And of course it brought the money in. Oh, yeah. My wife came and worked for me as my secretary. Did she really? So she's, she's still trying to sort me out after all these years. But she's, she's not given up yet. Well, you know, she's, she's got heart problems at the no, moment. No, I meant, you know, on, on one day reforming you and keeping you running in the straight and now. Well, I think she gave up a long time I thought you might have done. Yes. After 64 years, that's quite quite remarkable. But so, also, of course, this was another interesting thing. There was a great shortage of building materials and things to build houses. Indeed there was. And of course, huge. because of all the bombing, yes. and the shortage of what they call reinforcing rods. Yes. And um, so I discovered... Uh, that you could buy the, they used to come in big rolls mm -hmm. and they used to have different diameters, inch down to a quarter of an inch. So, the, you know, you could get a three quarter inch reinforcing rod, which is a very big thing. Yes. And um, we found a very old machine which straightened these rolls out. It sort of like the <laughs> rag went like that and it pulled them like this and, and made them straight. Shoot. And then we <laughs> cut them off to the right lengths. So th there they are. And so this was a very profitable, very exciting mm. business. I did it with, in partnership mm. um, with, with uh, uh, Malcolm, who was Malcolm Ferguson, and um, he had a young man. He'd been a colonel in Africa or something. Right. And he had a young man. Of course, to show our innocence, I realise now that they were a gay couple. Oh, were they? <laughs> living together, but oh, in those right. days it didn't even occur to me. Well, them, no, it know? didn't, because it was high risk, wasn't it? Well, I don't know. You know well, it was, it, it was a criminal act. I suppose it was. Which is unbelievable. But it just didn't occur to did me. Did it? No, no. Oh, right. But so we did so well mm. that my wife and I, or well, she wasn't my wife then, we thought, well, we'll get married. Love it. And it was my money which was running the business, obviously. Right. And so we said, well, uh, Malcolm was my best man for the mm -hmm. wedding, and uh, we went off. I left him with a whole mountain of signed checks. Uh, so I said, you know, while we were on our honeymoon, and while we were on our honeymoon, <laughs> he phoned me up. He said, have you got enough money, Eric, for what you want? I said, yes, I'm all right for money. Of course, I came away all right. He said, oh, that's good. 
And of course, when I got back, I realized why he'd said he that. Cleared you out. He'd cleared out the whole account um, for to settle his own debts, nothing to do with that me. Right. And of course, it ruined the business. So there, there was I with the uh, this very profitable business. Yeah. If we were running it, there used to be big arches under at Camden Town. Oh yes. The railway, yeah. And we were doing it from there. Really? And uh, unfortunately, it killed the business, which yeah. was, a, was a great, great. So shame. No, no criminal proceedings, or oh no, I didn't do believe in that. I, no. I, I still don't believe in that. He was the one who suffered by it, mm. basically. He's got it on his conscience, and mm. um, but but it taught, so, taught me a lesson. I, uh, I've never signed no. a, a signed blank check again no. because of that, and I don't believe in going into a partnership because apparently. If you're in a partnership, you're responsible. You're responsible for that. So, uh, although I could have got him for, for though, forgery, though you've been in a very long partnership. Oh, I've been in about sixty-four years. Exactly, and that's the best partnership you've had. Absolutely. Could, so could, could I'm not sure it. that what you say about not believing in partnerships is totally true. You're I a commercial know, partnership. Commercial, part, commercial, commercial partnership. partnership. Okay. Well, so, there's no hope for me then, Eric, on that basis. <laughs> How long so, have you been married? Uh, Thirty. We're, we're compared to sixty-four. Yeah, uh, well, it seems a long you're time. You're still a young man. I've got uh, children your age, so. so. I'm sure you. <laughs> probably older, but we won't go there either. Yeah. So you've gone back to Tutenbeck. Obviously, your father and family were. He was back on. He was starting uh, it, music. It, it, doing, doing his music. music. Yeah. Doing his music uh, yeah. You set up this business, uh, and you were uh, defrauded by your partner. So there you are, with minutes left of this episode, um, what were you then going to do? Well, this is where... Because you were now married with re yes, family responsibilities. Yes, absolutely. So I thought, well, the best thing I can do is to uh, go and get a job. Right. So it struck me as being a sensible, it sensible sounds good thing. Idea. And there were so lots of jobs. I remember, I remember going up to um, Ballam Library, because oh, right. I, I couldn't afford to go out and buy newspapers no, and what have no. you. And in those days, they used to have these big racks with all the papers on it, yes. so you could walk through and read all the papers, and people did it. Yes, they, they did. They still do, Eric, actually. Do they? Oh, yes, that's they and still at Ballon. I'm pleased, do they? Oh, that's, that's building still there. Is it very good? Yeah. But at any rate, so, so I looked at these, and um, I saw an advert there, it said, Space Salesman. So I thought, well, what on earth is a space salesman? Yeah. Okay. So I didn't know what a space salesman was even, so I rang up and had the appointment in Victoria and I went and saw the man and I don't know why I did this but he said have you do you know I thought oh, that's fine space selling's no problem at all well I wasn't telling a fib because space selling wouldn't be a problem to somebody if who you, knew no, about it absolutely but I said space selling is no problem at all so I take it so, this was newspaper space no this oh, it, right. it was a thing in factories oh yes uh, showing holiday accommodation Right. So he said, no, all you've got to do is to go and sell these spaces and uh, he said, you go down to market at your own expense, needless to say. Absolutely. And uh, so I went down to Margate and I knocked on the hotel doors and fortunately I, I sold a tremendous, I didn't know what I was doing. And but I, you did it well. I, I, I sold about 10, 10 of these spaces. And so when I when I came back, yes, he, he was delighted. I bet he the was. moon, you know, he couldn't believe it. So this was in uh, timeshare, but something. Because no, I'm, I'm not quite this, sure this, what this was. They they made arrangement with some big factory. Yes, they yes. put this big poster up showing all the hotels. Yes, uh, yes. advertised so people would go to those hotels to stay. Oh, right. You see, and sort of I, promotional. And, and I found out afterwards that the average person went out and they were lucky if they sold two or three in a week. I sold ten in a day. I love it. So, um, so you, so what we've discovered in this episode is you're a natural salesman. Well, I suppose that's okay. right. Yes. I think we're going to. Sorry, folks, we're running out of time. Uh, it is Friday. It is foggy. It is Felix Day. <laughs> but we will be back again to progress with uh, this is your life with young Eric. Good. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for that, Eric. Good. That's Thanks, great. Mike. Thank you.